Hello. I'm going to put a Summit Hydraulics Diverter Kit on my John Deere 1025R. Uh, the um, reason I chose the Diverter Kit was uh, so that it, you could control the amount of open and close that it's going to have on the grapple that I intend to use with this thing. I have a WR Long on another tractor um, and it has the buttons on the side, the, the little toggle switches, which works really good for brush because, I mean, you're trying to crush it and mash it up inside there and get it to stay. But I put a ladder in the, in the grapple one time just trying to move it around the property and it put a few marks on it because you really can't control how this thing's going to close. And the diverter kit uh, should allow that because basically it diverts the control from the curl and dump function into the grapple. So it should be able to let me just do a little bit of an open and close on it, a little bit softer. John Deere 1025R. So um, I'm going to take the floorboards off because several of the videos that I've watched, which I've tried to do my homework and get ready for this thing, uh, indicates that it, it works a lot better if uh, you can see all of what's under the tractor uh, to run the electrical lines and also see where the hydraulics are up under the floor. So I'll let you know how it goes. I have got all the bolts loose and the, and the screws. There's a 10 millimeter up on the top of this and a screw holding it here. This panel has two Phillips screws and each side of this has two 15 millimeter uh, bolts that hold it down. So I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, panels off of it. Removing the That just fell off. Wonderful. Set these aside. The differential lock on this side is pumping it. So I have easier to come around on this side so I can figure out how to work it. There are two fuel lines that are hooked into the floorboard on this side of it. And out she comes. A little dirty. Okay, got everything pulled out. Uh, can easily see where all the hydraulic lines are, and hopefully, when I pull the electrical down from the joystick control over here, then uh, I'll be able to see uh, where and how I can tie up these electrical lines. The fuse panel is, our, is also exposed. Okay, um, continuing on with this, the uh, diverter kit that I ordered uh, from Summit left Arizona, went to Texas, from Texas it wound up in Jackson, Mississippi, and then on to Atlanta. There the package decided that it wanted to go visit Greensboro, North Carolina for some reason. So instead of be delivering yesterday, uh, we're waiting on it today. Um, then it went back to Atlanta 
and then today is finally out for delivery from Evergreen, Alabama. So while I was waiting, I took the opportunity with all of the covers off to grease the four or five grease fittings that are in the underneath the floorboards that you can see. And <clears throat> I'm 60 plus years old and trying to crawl under a tractor uh, don't have the fancy lifts that TTWT has so uh, yeah it's a little harder so taking the opportunity to go ahead and, and do some greasing of the universal joints um, and uh, taking a look at the uh, adjustments for the tractor uh, cutting height. Uh, okay the box from Summit Hydraulics is here 19 pounds I've opened the box and scattered it out where you can see what's going on in here. Um, one thing that drew me to looking at this was that I wanted kind of a fall project. I wanted to do it myself. And uh, I'm not a I'm mechanic by any means, but I don't mind getting my hands dirty and working with stuff. So fall project was to uh, put this, uh, put a diverter kit on my 1025R in order to use a um, Frontier AV20F grapple that I already had. I have a small utility trailer and I don't have a trailer big enough to haul tractors around and, or a truck big enough to do that so um, what I've got is two tractors so what I wanted to do is be able to use that between the two. Um, I looked at a another company's kit that came fully included but it was a bit pricey I mean the, the kit the WR long that's on my other tractor they go from anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for the John Deere dealership to put them on and I got a pretty good price on mine I got it for a thousand dollars that's still a lot of money so looking for something less this kit from uh, Summit Hydraulics was $525 um, purchased from their website. When I was initially looking at it, all they had was just the uh, diverter valve, um, what you basically see mostly here, uh, and without the hoses. But the hoses kind of gave me a little bit of um, distress, I guess you'd want to call it. I wasn't really comfortable with this I'd never used them so I used the chat session to ask you know what size hoses and they sent me a link via email to their hose setups well the hose setups and what I had looked online at equipped uh, YouTube video he said he needed 88 inch hoses well theirs didn't have one that long I think it was 74 inches or something like that so uh, I told them maybe a diverter kit and, you know, could they provide additional length hoses. Got another email back that said, we're in the process of putting a kit together for the 1025R. I went, oh, really? Had a picture of it and, and it had the hoses that you see uh, that I've got laid out here. I'll include pictures of the two um, website photos. I went but since uh, gone back to their website and it is now for sale on their website for $525 which is what I paid for this and uh, just going to take you through a little bit of uh, what's in the kit like I said the main thing that kind of made me really interested in this kit was it included the hoses and uh, I had seen several videos where people had to piecemeal all of the different hoses and fittings and all that kind of stuff together. Several people made three and four and five trips to the hydraulic place to find uh, the, the fittings that would work properly for the, for the tractor and the diverter kit. So I'll let you know how that comes out. Um, some of the things were, you know, the hose fittings when I started looking online is what size hose. Uh, I actually measured my grapple. The grapple has a, a quarter inch hose, but what they sent is three eighths. 
uh, which is the supply back and forth to the uh, 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 to the valve. And then, what kind of fittings do you use? Do you use JIC, straight, NPT, ISO, and then the threads? Well, are they SAE or metric? Okay, so you sort of get an idea from my dilemma on that. What I really like about these hoses is they're already got the 90 degrees on them and they're made that way, um, which is really nice. I believe all of these 90s are going to go onto the diverter valve and then uh, all of these straight connections are going to come out of this pile of uh, fittings and that like on there. Um, the valve itself is this. It has one electrical component on it and it opens and closes um, a flow a few of hydraulics from this side to this side and this side. So input I think is over here, outputs this away and this way. Uh, but it came with some instructions which I cursory read through. They're a lot like ones I had seen online, so I feel really comfortable with it. So I'm going to read these very thoroughly, and uh, I'm going to get to work putting them on. The kit comes with a quick um, fuse plug, uh, which is going to be kind of nice. It will uh, go ahead and allow me to tie that into one of the existing fuses on there. I really wanted to use one that was switched, so when I turned it on, it would uh, it would be fused uh, and inside the uh, uh, key switch and not be on all the time here, possibly be in a drain or susceptible to something else. This is the electrical part that go on to that. This is the joystick it has a trigger that will open and close the valve. Um, this will actually replace the little tiny knob that's on the tractor uh, for the uh, loader. And this and these little black things that are inside here will go through these bolt holes and actually hold this onto the tractor. So it has a mounting bracket uh, to take it, put it onto the tractor. It also has... Um, this clamp to secure the uh, the front of the tractor to, to hold the uh, quick disconnects on and the hoses onto the front of the tractor. So I'll start putting all of this stuff together and I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, I've read through the instructions and this is what I believe. The hoses, there are Three sets of hoses. The long ones go to the front of the tractor where I'll use those to mount to the grapple. The shorter hoses will go from the valve back to the hard lines that are already on the tractor. These hoses that are a little bit longer will replace the two hoses that are already connected to the tractor uh, currently. They go from the um, female connectors on the tractor to the hard lines. So those are the different uh, hoses. There's six of these um, male and female uh, JIC uh, connectors. They will go to all six of these red spots on the valve. I'm going to go ahead and probably put those on. Uh, but and then these are the 45s. These 45s will go on this end and go to these male connectors that will be replaced, um, re replacing those two hoses. So those will go together. Not quite sure what those two go to, um, but there are some differences in the, uh, in the tractors. Mine's a 2016. So it has straight line hoses coming out of the um, straight line coming out of the hard lines on the tractor. And the newer ones 
seem to be they may be 90 degrees so it may be used in that for it. I went ahead and put the uh, connector um, the clamp that will hold it on to the tractor on. I said earlier these were plastic. They're not. They're metal. So uh, this would be what actually holds the uh, valve onto the tractor. And I didn't mention but there were some zip ties in there. Um, okay. Start putting stuff together. I took all of that group of six um, connectors, put them on the valve, just screwed them down hand tight for now. Went ahead and left all the coverings over them to keep all the dust out. The 245s, I connected to this and those, yeah, the 245s and then the male uh, quick disconnects I attached to that. Had a whole bunch of uh, dust caps, things well. You can tell it's pretty heavy the way that thing just clunked. So I'm going to go to the tractor and start putting it on from there. I'm not following the instructions exactly because I had it laid out here. It was nice and open. It was easy to get to for those valves. So I uh, just took advantage of that. I have come into the tractor shed and I've mounted the valve on the loader bracket um, mounts to the inside the clamps easily slide on there the bracket is sort of like an A if you want to think of it that way not real quite as steep but uh, it's tighter at the bottom than it is at the top so once you kind of get it on there um, keep it, it says to keep it loose that way you can move it up and down just uh, the natural flow and fit uh, for the hoses Next thing we're going to do is take off the top two um, hard lines from their flexible hoses. That's the dump and curl um, for the loader bucket. Be the same for the grapple when I have it on. So those are the two lines we're going to replace. So those two come loose from there. And then they will come loose uh, from the, back, the quick disconnect couplers, which will be the back two, It'll be the black and the yellow, just like these were, the black and the yellow. All right, let you know what it looks like when I get that done. Got the hoses off. Wasn't much to it. Um, those just popped off. Of course, a quick disconnect. These on the top. Come on, focus. They were uh, a little harder. One one was actually pretty easy. The other one had to mash pretty hard. But uh, you can tell from here on the, what it looks like on the ground. Uh, quite a bit of fluid ran out of it. I didn't. I, I put a rag under it, but that didn't even come close to catching what came out. I've got the hydraulic hoses uh, onto the the valve. The ones coming from the quick disconnects uh, go up and over and into the back of it. And then the hoses that go back to the original hard lines come out of the side that's closest to the tractor seat and come up and over. I'm not real happy with how far up they stick. Um, those hoses could have probably been almost a foot shorter. I'm going to check that out. I've got the uh, all the lines connected. I have not zip tied them all down. did put one zip tie kind of in the middle of all of the mess. Uh, a couple of lines are a little bit longer than I kind of wish they would be, but uh, that's what they are. And uh, I will make suggestions back to Summit. They did ask for some uh, feedback on their instructions and on the kit itself. So I'll be passing on what I told them I would do on it. The uh, long lines are like 94 inches. And they come up here and I can make them longer if I need to do that. Like I said, haven't tied anything down yet. Um, there's the 
inside of it. Kind of busy, but you know, with six hydraulic lines coming in and out of the same spot, you sort of expect it. So, gonna give it a crank and check for leaks and uh, probably just save the electrical part of it for tomorrow. I've run into my first problem. Um, the fitting I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with when I showed the opening I had to use here to come from uh, all of the hoses are female so the uh, that adapter went from here to here so I used the two uh, for the dump and the curl there's one under that one as well so I used it for that um, and that worked fine everything is great right there the next problem I'm going to show you. This problem is going from the end of this hose to this pioneer type fitting that's supposed to go to the grapple. This is a female, that's a female. I don't have another adapter, so uh, I guess I'll be making a trip to tr figure this out. These are the fittings that are on my grapple. Uh, like I said, I already had the grapple, and it's a, um, a Frontier grapple that's made for that size tractor. But uh, I've got Pioneer fittings. This is what came with the kit. This was what was already on the grapple, and also used by the other tractor. So I'm going to need to either change everything out or uh, I've got to get a couple of new fittings for this. This came with a kit. If you didn't have already have a grapple with uh, plumbing already run on it, then I don't guess it would really make any difference. Uh, you could use the ones that came with the kit. But I did send them the specs for this particular grapple, hoping that they would either advise me um, that it would work or wouldn't or send the right fittings, but that didn't happen. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the uh, electrical side of it and just see how that goes. Taking off the knob. Mine's actually loose enough I can do it with my hand with a rag over it. Of course, my hands are coated in a little bit of hydraulic fluid. From I'm doing all the hoses and stuff, so. Uh, okay, that's off. I'm going to clean up the threads with a wire brush because they've got some Loctite and a little bit of other stuff on it. Okay, I'm going to put the joystick uh, on here. It says to put this adapter in first. tied up this bundle of cables because it's got a spin as I put this on here and rather than try to uh, have it dangle all over the place I just put it up close. And around we go. threads on here so it's going to take it a few spins. Alright, getting kind of close. So I'm just going to get it in here about where I want it. Everything seems to be really tight there so I think that's where I'm going to leave it. Then there's a boot up under here. Uh, I'm going to take that loose and feed the wires through. I pulled this up. I went ahead and cut the um, end off of this red wire which had a fuse holder on it which was impossible.
impossible to get through there. And uh, I'm not going to use that fuse holder because they added, in the kit has an add a, an add -a fuse. And so that's what I'm going to use uh, from the kit for that. So now it's just a matter of routing the wires uh, down through the long side of the um, hydraulic connections on this side of it. And they feed down without much of any problem. Okay, okay. I've got the uh, wires routed from the joystick down through, zip tied them to several of the uh, hard lines down there to keep it nice and secure. The plug that plugs into the uh, uh, solenoid assembly uh, was quite long. It actually came out to about right here. I haven't secured it yet. Ran the power cords up into the fuse box and uh, I cut off about eh, a foot of the red cord since I won't need quite as much as they generously gave me. Looped the black wire over into the firewall and attached it uh, down to the grounding strap. It had a um, wire connector on it already. That was exactly the size of that uh, bolt, which I did need a um, 12 millimeter to get the bolt off. But all the wires stayed in place, thank goodness. They didn't go ever, well, there weren't two wires on it, but they didn't, they stayed right in, in place. It was very easy to do. So I've got that done. Now I guess I'm off to tractor supply to get those hydraulic parts. Took off one of these lines so that I had the line with me, had the correct, uh, so something like I actually screw in. So went to uh, Tractor Supply and was able to get um, male and female Pioneer fittings that matched the grapple and this adapter um, they didn't have but one. So off to the Merry Chases to our tractor places, which thank for me we have three of them um, went to all three and uh, came away with this they didn't have a 3 8 to a half so we had to go with an adapter but this was four dollars and this was five dollars so not much difference uh, got it all taken care of I get it put on I'll let you see what it does Making the final connections for the electrical, I put the uh, add a fuse in, and um, I told you earlier I had grounded it. This is the final part. This is the part that uh, goes uh, to the joystick connection. Um, there is a little screw. I'll just point that out that you might want to make sure you open it not in the grass or somewhere like that because that thing can fall out. It didn't for me because I happened to see it before I did that so I'm very careful. But uh, just keep that in mind as you're opening it. The rest of it is really simple. Um, has three plugs that are over on the um, solenoid which I really can't show you very well in there now because of all the hoses and stuff. It just simply plugs in. Mine's oriented uh, so that this part comes down so water don't get in it and all of that looks good. Well, finished the project. Uh, everything's on the tractor and uh, just going to give you a quick walk around. Like I said, this is a uh, 2014 uh, John Deere 1025R tractor. This is the grapple that I already owned. It's a AV20F front by Frontier, John Deere. Um, connects with the JDQA attachments. These are the connectors, the way it attached, attached uh, 
with the bracket and all the hoses. Happy with that. It's well out of the way of the grapple. Those is routed up through this way. These were the original hard lines, black and yellow. Can you see those? Uh, sort of pulled these back. They did stick up in the air quite a bit. Uh, pulled them back. They're really out of the way. I really haven't had any problem with them. Uh, could have been a little bit shorter and uh, left that feedback for Summit. The uh, quick disconnects are down here. They do a good job with that. Um, I did. Well, I'll show you just a little bit about the uh, joystick control and uh, the way it actually is working for me. The joystick is really nice. I like the way it feels. Uh, kind of feels like a you know airplane type thing. Um, has a trigger. This is what triggers the diverter valve. Um, makes it. Uh, use the the curl up curl down functions to open and close the grapple. Um, I'm going to crank it up and just show you how that works. the fence line around the property is a little bit messy so that's going to be a good fall to winter project to uh, to do that and here's property between my neighbor and myself so we'll use this to kind of drag all this stuff out um, my son has helped me before uh, taking a rake and chainsaw and one pulls with the rake and the other with the chainsaw and get it all just drug out and then uh, we'll just scoop it up with a with a grapple and move it uh, 
to where it can get uh, d disposed of, which is a good little piece from here. So that part will save an uh, old fellow like me uh, a few steps. Just using my uh, Nikon camera video mode on it. The uh, issue with that is it kind of got out of focus uh, toward the middle of what I was filming for that. I'm sorry. Uh, not taking the whole thing apart and starting all over again. So just use it for what it is, just entertainment value. Um, if you're seriously interested in this, try to find as much of the documentation online as you can. And then uh, watch several of these videos of mine. Uh, and there are several out there on different kits. Uh, some of them are Summit and some of them are not, but they're all worth watching. You'll learn something from them.